I'm your co-host Andre. I'm a product designer and co-founder of the fully distributed and remote innovation and product design studio Deep Work. I was previously working at AJ and Smart, where I worked on a lot of wonderful products, met Jake Knapp, and pioneered the first remote design sprint with a lot of caffeine and my coworker Bruna. I prefer working with Miro because of its very simple onboarding structure and very familiar navigation patterns. So I'll take you through the features of that and explain you how I use it. I designed a lot of templates for deep work sprints, for meetings, for modular systems that allow you to put together a meeting. And I really like how neat it is, but I'll show you in, a, in detail later. But for now, let me show you some facilitation basics. Cool, so let me go through Miro. Miro is probably named after Juan Miro, a Spanish artist, at least that's how I understand their visual identity and their name. It's very similar. These are a couple of boards that I created that you can, you can use. And you can see what it basically looks like. It's very similar in navigation-wise to something like Sketch or Figma, because you can go into a lot of detail, move things around, and they get like aligned to grids. And it makes it pretty easy to make everything look quite clean. So this is a board that I use for actual you know, deep work sprints. Um, there's another thing that I created, which is a library of different elements for pre-structuring your meeting in any way you want. Even though I'm not a visual designer, uh, it was still quite easy to make it look neat. So, but first of all, let's look at the sharing capability. So if you want to onboard someone onto your board, it's actually quite simple. So on one hand, you either use the sharing button and then have a link that's publicly, that lets you publicly access the board and you can share that with whoever you want and then the person who clicks on it can view it. Now they can't really edit it and it might be a feature that they will add in the future, uh, but if you want people to edit and collaborate on your board, you want to add some email addresses and then send them out when, when you press done. Let me see if I can send it to myself. Yeah, And then you send it. And when you send it, you want to add them to this board only. And so when you add the board, you select which area they're supposed to see once they, um, once they onboard. And once that's done, it sends out an email. So the person who receives it has to create an account uh, for free and then can log in and will jump in straight into this place and will be able to edit. The other part of sharing is by exporting a certain parts of it or the entire thing. Um, this is on the top right with this little icon. You can save a specific part as an image, which is also quite nice because you can only, only screenshot almost a certain part and then export it. You can also export it as a vector in a PDF, which will be basically indefinitely zoomable, but the, the, the size of the document will obviously increase with, with the amount of information that you're trying to pack into it. The other options would be saving the entire thing as, an, as a PDF. You can save the board as a template, which will be basically saved in your template folder. You can also download the board backup, which is a file that you can send to someone and they will be able to open it up and use it. You can also export it as a spreadsheet, which, which only obviously exports the text. You can embed it, save it to Google Drive or attach it to your Jira. The next thing is Miro's built-in communication tools. So Miro has video chat and written chat as a separate tool or a separate part of their suite, which is quite nice. And it allows you to jump straight into work without needing an account for a different video conferencing tool. Um, it is pretty basic, basic though. So if you want to start, you basically just press on this little camera button, you start a video chat, and it shows you all uh, one face at a time, I think. It the other thing that allows you to communicate with people at the same time is a chat, so you can kind of open this up and type whatever you want, and then um, it will um, show you everything that everybody has written. The next thing that's actually quite cool is the voting system. So um, they have a built-in one, which is pretty neat. I think it's right here under the thumb. So it's a built-in tool that it's actually quite customizable. So you set up a name for a voting session, you set up the duration for the voting session, say how many votes everybody should have. Um, you can select the area that you want people to vote in. So let's say we're only going to use these right here. Done. 
and only the sticky notes. So you could vote on text, shapes, and cards and images, but in most sessions you actually just need to vote on the, on the sticky notes. And so we're going to start voting now, and then everyone can vote. They will see this area, this is the focus area to vote on, and then I can select a bunch of posters to vote on, and this shows you how many votes, and you just basically click on them, and it'll it'll show them. When you're done, you as an admin just press done, and you can, if everybody else is finished, you can also end voting for everyone. So there they are. You can see them on the left-hand side. It's quite a simple tool. There's nothing really complicated to explain about it. Um, it's pretty basic though. So um, as you can see, actually, I prefer to use the red circular dots um, because if you want to vote on specific parts of an image, so if you, let's say, you drop in, drag and drop in an image into the mirror board and it shows you the image and you only like a specific part about it or you want to kind of communicate that you like a specific part about it, then you're using one of those red dots, red circles, it's just a shape that I made. The other thing is um, you can activate a timer and the timer is super important if you want to make your meeting super efficient. Um, pretty straightforward. You use this clock, put it on some seconds, minutes and hours, press start and then it runs out and shows you visually how much time is left. It shows everybody how much time is left. And then when it stops it makes a loud noise and jumps around a little bit and then you can close it or reset it. So that's also pretty straightforward. I like the interface, by the way. It's very, very self-explanatory. It doesn't require a lot of learning. There's another pretty cool thing that lets you follow someone else's cursor, or if you're a facilitator, you can call everybody to look at your screen or what you're focusing on. And in this case, let's say we're doing an exercise here, one of those, a team or perspective, and you want everybody to look at this. And uh, let's say, I am the facilitator, so I'm going to just go on my phone on this part. Um, and, but actually, every other person is browsing out somewhere else and looking at other things. And as a facilitator, you just tell people to click on your name. <clears throat> and it's a big A over here. You click on the name and then automatically jumps to the, to the place where you want them to focus. This way you can also see what other people are looking at and if they're actually active or not. Um, but it's a great tool to get everybody to focus on one thing. Another pretty cool thing is the ability to go through the past deleted or changed items. So if you have a post-it and you delete it, then the easiest way is to control or command Z and restore it or press this uh, restore button. Um, but the other thing is also that there is a list of activities. So everything that you do with the board is kept in a protocol, so you can actually click on it and then it shows you the exact thing that has been modified. Now here it has been edited because I probably just copy pasted it, but if you're thinking about recovering text or some information that you've written, uh, you can actually find these things. So you can see which bits are uh, rewritten with the actual text and you can scroll to it and then it shows you exactly what that text or copy was. So that's quite, quite cool. And the last thing that I want to mention is that they have an app. So as you might have seen before, I had this in my hand. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail for it now, but it actually looks like the same thing with the most basic functionality. And a great feature about this is that you can actually take pictures and photos of your real post-its from the office uh, with handwriting and then upload them to the board and it will automatically recognize the characters. It's quite cool, but it's a topic for another video. So that was it. Have fun and um, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.